let's look at a weighted average inventory problem here. Also, what's really, really, really important with this problem is to pay attention to this hint. Do not round the unit cost, meaning leave it five decimal places for all calculations. The only time you round is when you enter your numbers in my open math. Otherwise, all calculations should be completed with unrounded numbers. Do round total cost to the nearest cent on each transaction. So I will show you exactly what is meant by that as we work through the problem here. And I have to apologize because it kind of doesn't want to fit on my screen, um, the whole thing. So let's see if we can get it to work anyway. So we've got all of the details for our transactions and we know that we have to fill in first the beginning balance of what's on hand. So it was 80 units, had 80 units on hand at the beginning of the period that had a cost of 13 a total cost of uh, $1,040. Now, any time under weighted average that we make a purchase, we have to recalculate that average. And that's exactly what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna purchase 60 units that had a cost of 15, a uh, total cost of 900. So that those balances are gonna get added to my existing balance. So I'm gonna add 60 units to the 80 I already had on hand. That's gonna give me 140. The total cost is gonna go up by $900 to account for that new purchase. So I now have $1,940 and I'll have to recalculate the unit cost. All we do is take the total cost divided by the total units on hand. And when I do that, what I'm gonna get is $13.85714. Okay, so that's our unrounded number. Now, when we actually enter it into my open math, I'm gonna to have to round it to two decimal places. So I would enter it with the two, but it's not too important for this particular one because we have more purchases now on the third. So I'm gonna recalculate that average here in just a second anyway. Um, so we bought 780 more dollars worth of merchandise, which is 65 units that cost 12. So I'm going to add that 780 to the balance that I already have on hand, which is 1940. That's going to give me 2720. And I purchased uh, how many more units? 65. So I'm going to add 65 to that 140, which is going to give me 205. Oops, I didn't mean to take that. So take the 2720 divided by the 205, that's gonna give me an average cost of $13, or 0.26829. Okay, so this is the number, the entire number that I will use when I calculate my unit cost here when I sell 120 units. So I assume that I am selling 120 units that have an average cost of 13.26829. So take that whole number, multiply it times 120, and we will get a total cost of 1592. Okay, and then that number rounded, I will enter over here. But I don't use the rounded number when I calculate my total cost. I use the full five digit number. So I had 205, I sold 120. That means I am now left with what, uh, 130 units? No, 85, I take that back. 85 units, 205 minus 120 will leave me 85. And again, I know what that number is. I don't have to recalculate the average unless I make a purchase. So that stays the same. I'm gonna go ahead and round this back so that when I submit, I submit with the rounded number to two digits and I take the 85 times that entire number to get my total cost. 85 times 1327, or actually times 13.26829, it's gonna give you $1,127.80. Okay, now on the 15th, let's go ahead. We're gonna purchase 45 more units. So I'm gonna enter that in the purchases column. Those had a unit cost of 18, and that total cost was 810. Now I have to recalculate my average. I'm gonna take that $810 total cost, and it gets added to my previous balance. So I now have 1937.80. 
I have 85 units on hand and I bought 45. That will bring me to 130. And I now have to recalculate that average cost. And the way that I do that is by taking the total divided by the 130 units and I get an average cost of 14.90619. Okay, so now on the 17th, I sell 50. I assume, whoopsie, that they are gonna sell for that $14.90619. And so that comes to a total cost, $745.31. And then I'm gonna back that back to two digits. So $1491. And the quantity then, I had 130 and I sold 50, I'm down to 80. Same cost, don't have to recalculate unless I make a purchase. And then take the 80 times that number to get my total cost 1192.50 all right and then I can adjust that till I get the right two digit number very last thing we have on the 30th is we're selling 65 and this is no different than what we had above take point one four nine oh six point one nine so if I take the 65 times that oops that entire number I get to $968.90 and then I can adjust this back to my two digits before I submit my problem. 80 minus 65 means I'm going to have 15 left at 14.90619. Correct this one and do that math. 15 times that entire number gets me to $223.59 and now I can correct this as well. Very last thing we have to do is calculate our cost of goods sold. The way we do that is we look at our total cost under cost of goods sold and I'm going to add those three numbers together. Okay now I noticed something when I went to re-add those cost of goods sold. I didn't put this at two decimal places so I had a little mistake there. I'm going to go ahead and correct that and add the 20. So 1592.20 plus the 745.31 plus 968.90 means my cost of goods sold should have been $3,006.41. Ending inventory, we already have that number. If I just scroll over, 239.59. And then gross profit, we take how many units did we sell? 120 plus 50, that's 170 plus 65, is 235 units that had a sales price of $40 each, so that's $9,400. Take that revenue of $9,400, subtract our cost of goods sold, $3,006.41, and what do we get? $6,093.41. Five, nine. Now the very last thing you may want to do is just do a quick check like I did. Do I have all my numbers correct here before I go ahead and submit for um, to check my work? So let's go ahead and do that. And in this case it looks like we did just fine. So we got everything correct there. So we're ready to head to the next problem.